What's the word, YouTube? You know what it is, your boy Big Will. I'm back. Before we go any further, hey, if this is your first time here, or you're back like me, hit that like and subscribe button. It's free. It helps me out. And I appreciate it deeply. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll get into it. Thank you. So what's the word, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Will, and uh, I'm back. Thank you. For those of you that have been here on the channel um, and noticed that I've been gone probably the last three weeks, a month, I've had some personal shit that I had to work through and get through, and uh, so I took a little time out of my head. When you're... Uh, when you're a felon and there's a lot of people in society that judge you either way, you um you get to feel certain ways about shit, you know what I mean? And uh I'm still working on trying to get my anger under control on the raps and shit like that. But I had some personal uh things I had to run into, but let's put all that shit in, in the trunk, you know what I'm saying? And uh take it from there. This video I want to tell you about, it's uh, some of the shit that you go through when you're in prison, right? Uh, some things that you have to worry about. And uh, you see it happen all the time. I want to tell you, if any of you people, at your first time there, keep your personal shit locked up. Letters from home, um, pictures, minimal. Okay, when you're on a bottom bunk, if you have a cellmate, if you're in a, a single cell, you're okay, right? And you still got to, you know, people coming in, you invite people into your house and, you know, the shit you got to worry about, right? People touching your shit, um, people looking at your, your personal pictures, things like that, it becomes an issue, right? And then there's things you have to worry about with people. You know, everybody tries to protect their personal shit. You don't want nobody touching your shit. You know, somebody will come in and they'll be talking to you. And before you know it, your, your deodorant's gone. You know what I mean? Um, you walk in, before you know it, your, your, your bowl's gone. Stupid things. Your bowl, uh, your cup. You know, when you come in and you... When you, when you, when you got all your personal shit... Identify it, mark it. You know what I'm saying. Put something on it that that's gonna identify you. You know what I mean. Um, it just helps. It helps. It helps you out in the long run. You know what I mean. Um, but one of the biggest things you want to keep tucked away and you don't let people get into is, like I said, your pictures. You got pictures of your girl. You got pictures of your your. Your friend, uh, your girl's friend, or shit like that. You know, you got a sister, your mother. You keep that shit tucked away. When your girl writes you a letter, rip her, rip her address off. Don't leave the address on it, because what 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 happens is, and I've seen it time and time again. You sit down, you read a letter from somebody, and you put that address on your bed. Or you put the address, you put the envelope inside of your, you know, on your bed or whatever. You put the address inside of your little folder or whatever, you, wherever you keep your mail. And you may be away at class, and someone will come walking by your cell. And if you know, if, if you if you're in a facility where you can't lock your door and control it, you know, when your tear opens, all the cells open, and your cell might be open. Someone might enter your cell. You know, um, and let's say that you have a fight with your girl or someone who's your homeboy or not even your homeboy that may have come by and glanced and saw a picture of your girl. They may have even swiped a picture of your girl, you know, shit like that. Your sister, like I said, your mother. But they'll take the picture or if you come by and you got mail on your desk. Okay, so a lot of times, um, there's some facilities to see all walk around and they'll pass mail out. 
other facilities, they'll sit at the desk and they'll call you out. Dupris, Souza, whoever, they'll call you out. Mail, when you go up to the desk and get your mail. Never tell any of your buddies, hey, wanna get my, hey, wanna get my, my mail? Some people have very good memories and they look at, you know, they may have seen your girl on a visit or they may have seen your sister or like I said, and all of a sudden they got, they look in a CDM, the address and you're, and you and your girl are fighting. So now somebody might say, well, they're fighting and you know, guys will walk in, fuck her, I'm all done with her, fuck her. And you get this guy on the side of you that supposed to be a homeboy and he tries sliding in to her DMs. <laughs> like, we'll say, you know. But he'll send her a letter. And some guys just don't care. Some guys got nothing, so they reach out to anybody. Or it could be your mother. Never. Never call and give like a three way unless it's an emergency. Okay, you ever want to call for somebody? Don't ever give somebody a phone number to call for you. Don't ever give somebody, hey, want to call? Or oh, you're on lockdown. Hey, here's my chick's number. Call, go call on three way, or go call with your pin number. Go call, and I and tell her that I'm on lock up. Blah blah blah. Don't come for the visit. Shit like that. You may think it's all innocent and stuff, and next thing you know, they're right in your girl. And maybe you and your girl are fighting, so they're not going to call. She's not going to tell you, right? Or maybe she don't want to tell you because she knows you're going to overreact. I happened to a friend of mine where, and it was a close, it was a close friend of his. And, um... The kid Steve was fighting with his girl. And Ricky, and that's what that's that that was the incident that I was telling you about. Steve got in trouble, and he had a lockdown for three days, and it was gonna affect his visit. So we told Ricky, "Hey, I'm gonna call my girl and tell her that I'm not available for the visit." And Ricky did. And on the side, he called his girl without him knowing. Steve's girl didn't want to tell him. She didn't want to tell him that his boy was calling her. But she had to. Right? And it led to it led to it led to Steve and Ricky fighting and not be like losing their friendship. But it also led to Steve catching more time he caught a case out of it because he lost his mind. And he ended up slicing Ricky. But he reacted. He oh, I don't want to say he overreacted because I, I would I would have or any, any man would have done the same thing, right? But the thing is that he didn't do it smartly. He didn't call him in the cell. He didn't grab him in the showers. He didn't grab him in the bathroom and handle his business. When his girl told him, when he finally got off of his ticket the next week and he went for a visit, she told him that Ricky had called me and he heard Steve and his girl arguing. He heard Steve arguing with her on the phone. And Ricky had called her and told her that he was talking to another girl on the phone. Ricky told Steve's girl that he was writing other chicks and some guys will do what they go and they, you know, they'll sweet talk one girl and they'll try and sweet talk another. And it's wrong. Yeah, it is wrong. But when you're locked up, you're, you're being locked up because you're wrong, right? So when you start, when you're writing someone else and you're doing it to maybe get canteen or you're doing it. And, I, you know, you don't do it for a visit. You might get one, though. You know what I'm saying? But you do it because, hey, I know this chick will send me canteen. Or, or you know, one, one of your homeboys will say, hey, my girl's got a friend. I just want someone to talk to. She'll send you money and stuff. And you start with, with you start with a pen pal, and they're sending you canteen and sending you money. 
you know, and some girls fall for it and they want more. Some girls want the bad boy and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you may be talking to your friend's girl, your, your, your friend's girl's friend, right? And now she starts falling for you and making a scene. Dudes do this shit, right? But Ricky told Steve's girl about it. And the bad part about it was Steve and Ricky were... They were boys from the streets. Right? They were boys from the streets. They were both from Masonic Mass. And they were friends. And, and Steve overreacted. And he cut Ricky with a, face, with a razor on his cheek. But he did it in a day room. He came back from a visit, went to his cell, got a razor, and came back out and just reacted. And everybody was there, everybody saw it. So he ended up getting charged, saw him battery with a dangerous weapon, and he got moved away. They got separated, and uh, Ricky ended up with stitches. I think it was like 43 stitches he got and went down his face. And, uh,. You don't fuck with people's family. But there are people out there that will go through your personal shit. They will remember your wife's address. And they will try to snake your girl in the back door. Without you knowing. And some guys, like I said, they don't care if you find out and you just go head to head or whatever. They'll they'll keep it a secret until, you know, and if it comes out in the open or well, they deal with it. And if it don't. Then why they did this and they uh, guys are snakes, man. They are dirty. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta remember one thing. In prison, they may be good people, but they're not upstanding citizens. There's a lot of people that are in there that of they're not bad people. They just made a bad decision. They may have drove drunk or whatever. But once you're in there and you're surrounded by that negativity and you're surrounded by this criminal behavior all the time and that's all people talk about what they're there for and what they did to get there and how they were living on the streets and who they were selling drugs to you fall into this atmosphere you fall into this routine of being a convict right and you learn these ways and some guys go out and they they learn a lot of shit in prison they go out and they they got a new hobby or they got a new craft that they're going to try out something that they learned in prison, which only lands them back in prison, but they will try because maybe breaking into houses didn't work for them. So now they're going to try credit, credit card fraud or check fraud, you know, shit like that. There are guys in there that are snakes and they're not the most honest people and you can't trust nobody. You cannot trust nobody. I told you all about the story. Go go check my page. The young kid that was in there. And he had an older guy that was his. He knew from the streets. And when he came in, he came in alone. And he didn't know nobody. And when he seen this older guy, he knew him from the streets. And he was, he was so relieved. I know him. And the guy schooled him and fed him and took care of him. And took him under his wing. And it was his little pet. And they had a... You know, a holiday little celebration and the, the the older guy made him a mix. Put some sleeping pills into his little punch that he had or his food. Then he kept passed out and he raped him. And this kid had to wake up and knew something happened to him. And knew that there's only two people in the cell. Me and you. And I ain't walking right. What happened? And it just goes to show you. You cannot trust anybody. Family, friends. Family are in there. I'll tell you the story about family. On another video. What it got me into. But it was family. But it's just a little, a little reminder. You cannot trust anybody in prison. Nobody is your friend. You're there, you went in by yourself, you want to leave by yourself. 
you keep your friends close but your enemies closer you keep an eye on everybody and you just learn you watch but you gotta be you gotta keep your mind and your eyes open this is your belly it's your boy big will and i'm back i'll see you on another video i'll get into that video and i'll tell you about family how you can trust family you can't and i'll let you know and uh We'll take it from here. I'll see you on the next one. Hey, again, please hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get this up to a thousand, a thousand viewers. I appreciate it. A thousand subs and let's just climb. We'll take it from there. It's your boy Big Will, Life After Prison. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.